We know that you're ready to make food at home that tastes great, doesn't break the bank, and is guest worthy. Hi, I'm Mariela. And I'm Eric. And we're here to encourage you to make your own croutons, sharpen your kitchen intuition, and show you how versatile food can be. We're breaking down all things cooking to their most practical, delicious, and doable basics. Welcome to our kitchen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode two of Food FAQ, Cooking with Mariela and Eric. Today, we're going to kick off our Kitchen Basics series, where we're talking about fat. <laughs> you say it like so deliciously. <laughs> <laughs> Not all fat is bad. All fat is delicious, right? That's why I'm so scrumptious, Mariella. <laughs> oh. It's not the fat's fault that you know it's not. <laughs> no, I mean, at all. That's a, we are we are body positivity here, Mariella. Amen. All right, so today we're going to talk about, um, you know, fats that we want to keep and how to use them. So Mm -hmm. I think, you know, right now there's so many different fats to choose from. There's coconut oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil. There's a confusion of what type of fats to have in your your home. And I think just, you know, keep it simple. So, you know, we talk about, you know, we hear a lot about extra virgin olive oil, Um, creams, vegetable oils, sesame oils, and butter. And I think, you know, what do we do with those? First, we got to talk about like, why, why do we need fat, right? Other than it tasting good. Like when you think about fat, like I think about bacon, grease, which tastes delicious, but it's not something you keep ever, right? Right. So what do we need these fats for? Generally, you need them to kind of carry flavor like when you think about making a dressing right that carries the flavor of the vinegar the spices whatever sweet a agent you... of flavor right that was your um verbiage and it's yeah. it's delicious you know so it also adds moisture to baked goods even to like meats you know we bathe it in butter we'll bathe it in olive oil and it adds like a like a like a lippy deliciousness to it when you're eating it some oils you can use like extra virgin right we can use it two ways we can use it to well i think extra virgin olive oil is good to like physically eat you know again we talked you know you talked about salad dressings but you know something simple as dipping bread into it it's it's a flavor thing just kind of like almost like sesame oil it's a flavoring and um i think sometimes we get a little scared to use oil as a flavoring Mm -hmm. um but when it's used properly and in the right moderation, it's, you know, perfectly fine. And irreplaceable. Um, right. It adds like an umami. Ooh. <laughs> an umami to your, to like your meal. Exactly. <laughs> but I think, you know, some fats that people also don't think about to keep in your home, um, you know, things like, you know, cream and butter. Right. Those you don't think of it also. as like a fat, right? I think most people right. like, cream hmm, what do i use cream for you can use literally cream in many many absolute meals every day if you wanted to you could literally use it for everything but let's start with like the queen of oils extra virgin olive oil delicious right it's like the most all-purpose oil if you have no oils in your house have this oil well because it's an oil you can also cook with too exactly. i mean keep in mind it has a really it, It burns easily. Yeah. So it's not something you can necessarily deep fry with or whatnot, but you can penne with it. You can saute with it. Um, You know, so if somebody is building like their kitchen, like they're, 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 they moved out of their home, they're building their kitchen. What are the fats that you would say people should keep on hand at all times? Definitely extra virgin olive oil. And you don't have to get the expensive stuff, right? Because you may not be dipping your like Tuscan bread in it every day. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on olive oil. The cheap stuff is good enough if you're going to cook with it because you're not eating it raw. Right. So have it, buy it. Like they have one at Trader Joe's that's like $8 and it's big and it comes with like a silver little pour thing in it. That's like the best olive oil to cook with. Right. And it's super inexpensive and it lasts you a long time. So besides extra virgin olive oil, what else do you think? I'm going to say, like, in my kitchen, right? I'm a cook 
right? I cannot replace the taste of sesame oil with anything else. Right. I need sesame oil. I use it more often than you would think. It comes in a tiny bottle. It lasts you for a very long time. A little goes a long way. 100%. You just put like a teaspoon in like whatever sauce you're making for dumplings or if you're making a stir fry or, or many times I'll just make a sauce with soy, um, brown sugar, and a touch of sesame oil. And that sauce can go in anything. So irreplaceable for me as a cook. And it will be for you too soon once you realize how useful it is and how cost effective it really is to use so so far we've covered extra virgin olive oil we talked a little bit about sesame oil what else you got for me Keith? butter isn't it so delicious butter all right i'm gonna tell you something tell me. i'm actually not a big butter person believe it or not that's ridiculous yeah i'm not a big butter person i don't put it on things but i think that was a habit a slap in the hand, like, don't eat those calories. Like a diet culture thing. Right. So I think that's why I grew up, like, not eating, you know, butter very often. Not that butter was banned in my home growing up. It was not. You you know my mother. It was definitely yeah. not banned in my home. You know, Maria can eat her butter. But, um, <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, it's not something I really do. But I, I do want to say something about butter, though. Mm. And I, I have talked about this. I think kind of like oils, if you're going to eat the butter straight out, like you're going to put it on bread or you're going to make something where the butter is the main ingredient, like a shortbread or something like that, then go ahead and spend the money on like a decent butter, like a Kerrygold butter or something like that. Right. But if you're just baking, like, you know. Regular, regular baking, you can just use a stick of butter from the name brand store, please. Right. Like if you're making like, you know, chocolate chip cookies from like, just you know, just a regular generic recipe of chocolate chip cookies. You could just use regular store-bought butter. The The butter is literally in there to moisten it. It's not your main vessel of flavor. Right. Um, I think right now we have a foodie culture, which is really fun. But we have a foodie culture that says that you need to buy the most expensive butter out there in anything you make. And you don't. You can which, literally purchase the store name butter. Which, by the way, store name butter is like five bucks now. So it's not even like it's cheap. You're not buying like land lakes. No, I don't even like margarine. Margarine is a no-no. Like, don't use no, margarine. Not. It's plastic. That's just that's just a no. Yeah. Like, regular, every like everyday baking, everyday cooking, you can buy the cheaper butter 100%. And it makes it great. Right. right. It does. And like I said, if you're, you know, like, I know that, like, for you, like, your breakfast is in the morning. You like butter on whatever you're eating in the morning. It's fine to use a more expensive butter that way. Yeah, so, which I do, know. right? Even if it's like slightly more expensive, I'll use a better, like I don't use like a stick of butter on my bread because you can't spread that stuff, man. It's incredibly hard to do. <laughs> and I am tired in the morning and I need coffee and bread and delicious and butter. butter. And also another thing to mention about butter. I know that all the recipes call for unsalted butter. And I think that's another myth. Um, I make all my baked goods with salted butter and it tastes, I think, better. Can I tell you, I sometimes don't pay attention to whether it's salted or unsalted. You don't need I it. It's bull crap. It. Some butters, you know, even like, you know, eat like a cheese, you know, yeah. but those are butters that you, and yeah, remember that butter you got at Wegmans? Yes. Those are butters that you spend the money on. But if this is just a regular everyday butter in your home, there's no use in spending the money on anything really expensive. And if you're going to bake, you're baking for a party, holidays, just get the cheap stuff. It's not going to make a difference. No one's going to say... You know, oh, this Nestle Toll House recipe is so much better with expensive <laughs> butter. No yeah, so, so. that's just like a rule of thumb, right? You can use the cheap stuff if you're cooking with it. If you're adding heat, use the cheap. If you're not, if you're just eating it cold and raw, then you want to make sure you spend a little bit more, whatever you can, to make it taste more delicious. Then we have vegetable oil. I don't know if everybody carries this. I do. I fry from time to time. <laughs> I make a very world famous chicken cutlet and fried pork. You do. I made for you. You and do. The are... the day you flew out, I came home from work and there were chicken cutlets in my home. And they were delicious. now I know what my mom says. She's <laughs> you know like Mary Ellie used to be well, you know, like you know, like Mary Ellie used to be over more. Now I know why. Because I come <laughs> home. There's chicken cutlets in my home. <laughs> now you know what it's like to have a wife. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> now you know what it's like to be married to yourself. <laughs> no. I was like, when I first came out, my mom was like, Who's going to cook for you? <laughs> You're like, Me, but, you know, that, mom. That, 
<laughs> that's like you know the boomer mentality you know back know. in the 90s you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other episode a hundred thousand um, percent i don't really keep oil in my home either you but don't. i see the benefit of it I don't, well, because I, again, just out of habit, I don't really fry much, but I will say though, that when you keep an oil like that in your home, it, I think it covers all bases of the fats that you want to keep. Cause I think, you know, the point here too, is like, you know, like we talked about in the first episode, how can we keep things inexpensive and make keeping things inexpensive is keeping staples mm-hmm. in your pantry. And so I think these four fats, you know, four or five fats, however many we have here, that's a staple that you can have in your home. Yeah. And, you know, vegetable oil you can also use for baking, which I don't do often, but I did make these muffins the other day with vegetable oil and they were yummy. So sometimes you can use vegetable oil for more than one thing. And me and you are both like super stringent on not monotasking any right. kitchen thing, right? Nothing, right. So right. these oils, extra virgin olive oil, not a monotasker. You can cook, you can marinate, you can saute, you can, you can... What else can you do with it? You could eat it if you buy a high quality. You could eat it raw with cream. You can literally put cream in anything. Literally in your mac and cheese, okay, with a little pepper. And it's got your pepe. <laughs> Who you put some Parmesan in that sucker. <laughs> Daddy, do you remember back in the day <laughs> when, I used to make, when I used to make brownies, but I used to substitute oil for applesauce? Oh, because you and thought it was like better. the most delicious thing. <laughs> Not that I would eat the whole pan. Do yeah. <laughs> like it's fat free. Yeah. It's the nineties. <laughs> you make fun of me. So dumb. I know. Listen, but I I tried them with you. You used to like that crusty's brand. Is it even the right name? I don't remember. I have no idea what it's some brand like that I used it. to buy because it would just be like you know put it with applesauce. It's fat free, and then but if you eat the whole pan. <laughs> Not. It's not I'm the just... fat that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> just putting it out there. Which is funny you should say that, right? Yeah, people are definitely afraid of fat and they've been substituting it out for lots of stuff. But I feel like if you're going to eat a cookie, eat the freaking cookie. Like, there is no cookie substitute, in my yeah. opinion. You know, like if you just want one, just eat it. Um, obviously, if you have like special diet concerns that are like, it'll be detrimental to your health don't eat the cookie but if you're just a regular person like just do it do the thing eat the fat it's gonna be okay you're gonna survive it you know just eat some more vegetables or something i'm not a dietitian i don't know but i'm a very big proponent for eat the fat (laughs) well i think also it's just like you know take the middle path you know Mm -hmm. i mean if you have a dietary restriction or dietary concern about the fat content or caloric content in oil you know um if you're gonna eat a cookie eat a really good one Right. And, you know, you just have to use, you know, moderate, if you're concerned about the calorie intake, you know, use moderation, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of having, you know, 10, many cookies, <laughs> many cookies in a sitting, 10, 12. I'm guilty, but, you know, um, but if you are concerned about that, then go ahead and, you know, you use moderation, um, you know, have one or two really good ones. Yes. And that will satiate that feeling for it. So, but I think if these basic fats are kept in your home, this is, you know, the start of like you and I started this podcast. This is the start of you being able to build your own home cooking. Just, you know, yes. with these. So we're going to recap. So it's extra virgin olive oil at any price point, depending on how you want to eat it. Cream is excellent to have. And it also lasts a long time in the refrigerator. Right. Cream lasts a really long time, which is my favorite thing about cream. Yeah, the half and half is still in my refrigerator from when you were here last. But you bought 25 and... gallons of it, which is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was buying. You come, this, you come see me, there's like a vat of half and half in my Which house. I love. Just thank you so much for that, because I really need half and half in my coffee. I cannot stand powder or milk. Milk is like the devil, the devil, the devil, and... It's that, and black coffee is for the devil. <laughs> That's the oh, mark of the beast, black. okay? <laughs> my apologies. I like my coffee black. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> I my bad for being a purist. Okay. Yes, yeah, pure. Oh, shut up. Okay. We're enjoying <laughs> the bitter taste. The bean juice. <laughs> the bean juice. <laughs> Coffee is a vessel for sweet things and creamy things to make you wake up and remember that life is sweet. <laughs> that's what that's what it is, Eric. Okay. That's what coffee is. It's a metaphor for life. It's not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's All right, one. we're recapping. Damn it! Okay, extra virgin olive oil, cream, vegetable oil, sesame oil, and butter. These are the like ground zero basics in your kitchen right now. And if you have to not get some, then you can skip out on like the cream and butter. What do you think? And and the I mean on the cream and sesame oil. What do you think? I mean, I think I think if you had to skip some right now. I think the cream and sesame oil, because sesame oil, you know, we did talk about comes in a small container. It is a little pricey. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think the last time I bought sesame oil, it was not too long ago. And I think it was like eight bucks or something like that for a small Mm -hmm. um, container. And I bought it at like an H Mart and it was still, you know, like $8 for it. So, but I, I think if, you know, those are your basis, but if you had to cut two out, I would say butter and sesame oil only because you can substitute the oil for, for butter um, if you're looking for flavor, you can use the extra virgin olive oil instead of butter. Yeah. But if you want to be really good, use extra virgin olive oil with butter. But that's that another, is another day. Yeah. That's a that's a teaser, baby. <laughs> another <laughs> day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I hope that we helped you understand how much we really like to eat food, especially fat, and how necessary it is in your kitchen. If you have any questions, please, please, please drop us an email. We are happy to answer anything or leave us a comment. And don't forget to leave us a review, five stars, please. And you What's can email, Mariela? Oh, it's on our show notes, but it is uh, foodfaqpod at gmail.com. And you can find us on Instagram at a handle that I can't remember right now, but it will be in the show notes. Anything else, Keith? No, ma'am. All right, we'll see you in the next one. So we're going to continue our Kitchen Basics next time you hear us. Have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Food FAQ Podcast. Please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that more kitchen magicians can find us and invite you to their dinner parties. Connect with us over on Instagram at Food FAQ Podcast for more fun and recipes. See you there.